Hi, I'm Brooke Benton. Today, I'm here to teach you how to safely and effectively use a kettlebell for a total body conditioning workout. These exercises are kind on your joints, but very effective in helping you lose body fat, tone up, and develop a strong and lean physique. As a former RKC and current Strong First Gira Level 2 kettlebell instructor, I'm certified and ready to teach you how to get the most out of this equipment. Let's dive in. A hard style plank is a body weight exercise that's in essence the apex of many kettlebell exercises. So we need to master the hard style plank before ever touching the kettlebell. To assume hard style plank, create fists with your hands and then place your forearms parallel to one another on the ground. You'll step back to where your toes are in line with your elbows. And now imagine you are in dried cement. So there's cement that is dried around your elbows and your toes, but you are trying to pull the elbows towards the toes and the toes towards the elbows. You can't actually go anywhere, but you're trying to pull those points closer together, somewhat similar to a stiff arm lat pull down. Also, clench through your glutes. So tighten up through your rear end and tighten through your abdominals. If you create a fist with one hand and hit it on your abs, you should feel that you are strong and solid through those abs. This is a hard style plank. It is the apex of every kettlebell swing. It's the apex of every clean. It's the apex of every press and every snatch. So it's essential that you master that hard style plank before moving on to anything else. A bent knee deadlift is the base that all hard style swings build from. If you can deadlift, you can swing. The thing is, a lot of people are really unfamiliar with a bent knee deadlift. They're super familiar with a Romanian deadlift that looks like this, and a squat that goes down and up. Bent knee deadlift is going to take the hips back and then forward. So I like to use a wall as a training tool. I'm going to pull the hips back until my glutes touch the wall. Notice the rib cage is almost resting on the femurs here. My back is not vertical, but it is flat. It's going to come at a price to your lower back if you're rounded like an angry cat here at the bottom of the bent knee deadlift. So engage your core, flatten out your back, and then come forward to your hard style standing plank. Reach back, and forward, picture a slingshot, pulling back, boom, to drive out. Here to here, I should see no toes leaving the ground, nor the insides of the feet coming up off of the ground. You see I'm wearing somewhat funky shoes? It's the same thing as barefoot training, what I have on my feet right now. The reason barefoot training is ideal for hard style kettlebell is because I can see what's going on with your feet. I can tell if your toes are leaving the ground, if you're rolling outward, if your heels are coming up. It's one of the reasons I do not recommend doing kettlebell training in running shoes. A lot of running shoes have an elevated heel cup, which prevents you from doing a single proper deadlift and we do a ton of them in the workout today. So we wanna be sure that we're engaged close to the floor, we're rooted into the earth in order to then cut through the hips, drive back and forward. I highly recommend going to the wall to learn that bent knee deadlift. You should feel long through the hamstrings at the bottom of the deadlift, then turn on your core at the top. If you do not turn on that hard style plank, you'll end up going into hyperextension and that's gonna come at a price to the lower back. Super important, your core is turned on, your bottom of the deadlift, your back isn't vertical, but it is flat. Top of the deadlift, you're in a hard style plank. Here to here. The good news is, if you can deadlift, you can swing. An imaginary kettlebell swing would bring the hands right between the legs and then out. Be very careful not to come here, but to turn on your abs, to zip your abs, and hit that hard style plank at the apex of the swing. Let's move on to learn our front two-handed kettlebell swing. If you can deadlift, you can swing. The deadlift is the base to every hard style kettlebell swing. So every single time, you're gonna come to the deadlift and then drive out. This is not a no-fly zone. This is where you want to get in 
every single kettlebell swing because your force is coming from the glutes, from the big house. So we want to get those hands in close to where that force is produced in order to drive the kettlebell out. Now you're probably familiar with some swings that you've seen go all the way up here. I'll tell you that's bad news, and here's how come. There's a lot of force traveling this way when that kettlebell is swinging. It's going to come at a price to the shoulders if you muscle it up and intend on stopping the movement right here. When we want to project forward, we swing. Traditional hard style Russian swings. When we want to project upward, we snatch. So, a hard style two handed kettlebell swing is going to start by wrapping your fingers around the handle. Your legs are a little bit wider than your hips, and your toes are slightly turned out, knees tracking same direction as the toes. Your hamstrings should feel nice and long here, and your low ribs are almost resting on your femurs. You're going to wrap an OK sign around the kettlebell handle, then let the other finger, fingers wrap around as well. Tilt the kettlebell towards you, then drive that weight right between your legs and launch it out. Get the hard style plank at the apex of the swing, and the kettlebell should feel weightless. That means your glutes have driven the kettlebell out as far as it's going to go, gravity catches it, and it's going to stay in this movement pattern. Newton's law of inertia says an object in motion will stay in motion, and an object at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by another force. So, as long as you provide that strong pelvic thrust at the bottom of the swing, gravity's always going to catch it at the apex of the movement. You're going to stay in this pendulum series. This is a hard style kettlebell swing. A clean is a power exercise that takes potential energy from the ground and then we transfer it into kinetic energy into the kettlebell. Now, a lot of people find that they get banged and bruised by cleaning improperly, typically because they're letting the ball, the bottom part of the kettlebell, go over the knuckles and it bangs them up on that clean. So I recommend learning a dead clean first before moving on to a clean from flight. A dead clean is going to start by going down through a deadlift. The kettlebell is right between your feet. You wrap your fingers around the handle and then just raise your torso with somewhat of a bicep curl. You engage your lat like a row, but then just do a bicep curl to curl up. You notice how the ball then lands right outside of my forearm, right in this triangle between the bicep and the forearm with no banging or bruising. That's a great way to learn the exercise because the kettlebell should follow that same movement pattern even as you clean from flight. As you clean from flight, notice the ball still goes around the forearm, not over the knuckles. Similar to a dead clean. If you're finding you're getting banged and bruised with the clean from flight, start with your deadlift, dead clean, then eventually work up to a clean from flight. Also, notice. There's a straight wrist. There are no broken wrists in kettlebell. It's like martial arts, where there are no wrists in martial arts, there are no wrists in kettlebell. Spear the arm right through, fingers go straight through. This is a clean. A press is an exercise to strengthen through your deltoids, your shoulders. You typically go through a clean first to get in racked position, and then you'll press straight up towards the ceiling. I want you to notice that there should be no lateral flexion on the other side. It's not an Arnold press that comes out wide, nor is it a vertical press that goes straight up. It's in between the two with the kettlebell. So you open up slightly, press to the ceiling, then engage your lat and pull down. Of course, gravity would let you just pull that arm straight down and do the work for you, but I want you to get some lat strength out of it. So use your shoulder to press up to the top, then engage your lat, and imagine pulling yourself over a chin up bar as you bring the kettlebell right back into rack position. This is a shoulder press. A high pull, also known as a curvilinear row or a high gun slinger, is a power exercise that strengthens the glutes, the upper back, and the backs of the shoulders. You'll start off just like you would a swing, except in one arm. You'll come right between your legs, and then you're going to change the trajectory. Instead of letting the kettlebell go straight out, you're going to pull your thumb in towards your collarbone. 
do so without rotating your torso. So your hips and your shoulders fa stay facing straight forward as the elbow comes in here. I recommend using the free hand as a guide when you're initially learning a high pull. So you'll start wrapping the fingers around the handle, drive the kettlebell right between your legs, then straight up. The elbow should be at or slightly below shoulder height. Punch out. This is a high pull. Without the free hand as a guide, you'll eventually learn the rhythm and timing that you don't need to use the free hand. This is a high pull. A snatch is a combination of three exercises you've already learned today. So imagine if you married together your swing with a high pull and a press, you have a snatch. In other words, if you married this with this and this, what you end up with is this. The movement is initiated at the hips. It's your glutes that launch the kettlebell up. Then your shoulders grab it about halfway up and then spear to the roof. Just like with your clean, the ball should not go over the knuckles. It goes around the forearm. I recommend learning the dead snatch first. Just like with a clean, you'll take the kettlebell right between your feet and you're gonna keep it right next to your body as you just punch to the ceiling. That's a dead snatch. Start with dead snatches, then eventually you'll get in the same position that you would if you were going to start a swing. Kettlebells and arms distance in front of you. You'll drive your arm right between your legs. Hip hike. Pivot and punch. You end in hard style plank and there should be a straight line from wrist to elbow to shoulder to hip, knee and ankle, okay? So a snatch done properly is initiated at the hips. The shoulders only catch it about halfway up and you do want to tame the arc. Imagine somebody you care about deeply is standing in front of you. You don't want to hit them with that snatch. So tame the arc, crunch up to the ceiling. At the apex of the snatch, you should be completely locked out. No soft elbows. That's considered a no count. Completely locked out at the top of the snatch. This is a snatch. I do recommend allowing the kettlebell to fly over the calluses on the way down. So you're skipping from here to here, goosenecking over to prevent tearing, and, um, tearing your calluses and taking yourself out of practice for a while. Don't get greedy and add too many reps too quickly with snatches or you will risk injury to the calluses on your hands. A windmill is a full body exercise for strengthening and lengthening throughout your body. You're also going to add a little bit of twist through your torso. You're going to press or snatch your kettlebell overhead. One foot is going to turn and face the side wall. The other foot faces straight forward. The free hand is in the inner thigh. All of your weight is on the stable side. So this leg should be like you're shaking well-cooked barbecue off of the bone. Very, very limp through the free side. The free hand is here, you look up towards the kettlebell. This hip should pull out and back. So push that energy out and back as you sink down through your windmill and then rise up to the top. So it's a little bit of a rotation, a twist as you come down and up. Be sure that your kettlebell is light enough that you can safely keep it overhead. The kettlebell windmill looks like this. It's a good idea to have a friend or a training partner use a stretch rope on you as you're learning your windmills. They would take a stretch rope or a towel, they'd choke up on it here, and then pull out and back to really help you learn how to get the hip out in order to go into a deep windmill. If you have shoulder issues and pressing overhead is unavailable to you, another option is to take the kettlebell to the inside Free arm is up, 
windmill here. These are your kettlebell windmills. A Turkish get-up is over a 200-year-old exercise, and it's for full body strength, stability, and mobility. We're going to start by lying on your left side. You're going to wrap your left fingers around the handle, and then take your right fingers and cut them over the left. Even if you're only using a very light kettlebell, you respect this as if you are lifting a beast, which is a 105.6 pound kettlebell. Roll onto your back. Punch towards the ceiling with both arms. Once you feel stable, release the free arm and free leg. So your right arm and right leg will re release to a 45 degree angle. Slide your left heel in closer to your glute. Punch towards the ceiling and roll over onto your right forearm. Raise your torso to tall sit. You're gonna take that right foot, weave it through, and take your right knee about 12 inches from your right hand. Raise your torso. Swivel your back leg. Get a grip of the floor and get up. You're halfway there. Lunge back. Swivel. Take your free hand, slide it down the thigh, about 12 to 16 inches out. Right leg sweeps back through, drop down to your forearm, all the way down to your back. Free hand cups over, elbows to rib cage, then roll back over onto your left side where you started. Now when we go to the other side, you never want to pass directly over your face. We want to protect your head from ever getting a kettlebell dropped on it. So we halo around the head to the other side, roll onto your back. Punch the ceiling. Release your left arm and left leg, 45 degrees. Slide your right heel in closer to your glute. Roll over onto your left side. Raise to tall sit. And sweep that front leg through. The knee is 12 to 16 inches from the left wrist. Raise your torso. Swivel your leg. Get a grip of the floor and get up. Take your left leg back into a lunge. Swivel. Left hand slides down the thigh, equal and opposite with those arms. Left leg sweeps through. Drop down to your forearm, all the way down to your back. Left fingers cup over the right, elbows to rib cage. Roll to your right side. That, my friends, is a Turkish get up. A wheel workout has a hub and spokes. We'll always start and finish at the hub and return to it between each spoke exercise. Our hub to spoke ratio will be a 24 to 8 ratio for the first half of the workout when we're exploring basic kettlebell exercises. We'll transfer to a bigger wheel about halfway through and go to a 24 to 16 ratio for more advanced exercises that comprise our spokes towards the end. Our hub will be the granddaddy of all kettlebell exercises, the two-handed swing. We'll never hit a spoke twice, that is, unless you choose to do this workout twice. Please feel free to pause or stop at any time. The intensity of the spokes will get higher as the workout progresses. Grab a tall glass of water and let's get started. Let's take everything that you learned in the tutorial and put it together in this wheel workout. Before we dive in with the kettlebell, I'm going to introduce you to a warm-up that takes you through all three planes of movement and prepares you for everything to come. Hip circles, around to the right, and forward. So you feel a nice hamstring stretch as you pull your glutes to the back of the room, hip flexor stretch as you come to the front. Beautiful, around, other direction, hip circles, around, and forward. I like to do this stretch first thing in the morning when I get out of bed. Hip circles, so good for the hips, hamstrings. Even feels good in the lower back. One more. Arms out in front of you and hamstring stretch. I call these Frankensteins. You want to dorsiflex at your ankle, so pull your toes towards your shins. Four more like this. Hello, hamstrings. And now sumo squat. Down. A sumo squat is just a hardcore name for a plie. Great turnout at the toes. Knees track in the same direction as the toes. Two more here, standard squat with a knee strike. 
standard squat, knee strike. Just waking you up through the lower body and through the hips. Three, nice. Squat down and then reach the arms up high. Reach. If you'd like, come all the way up on the tippy toes. Triple extension, knees, hips, and ankles. Three, two, let's open the shoulders. Egyptians, reach, reach. I'm not concerned about what's going on with your legs as I am with the arms. One palm up, other palm down. Three, reach, reach. Interlock your fingers, halo, around. Those thumbs almost touch the back of the neck at the back of the halo. So awesome for the shoulders. One more halo. Nice glute stretch, rhythmic glute stretches. Looks like this. If we added impact, it would remind me of 1982 aerobics, but we're not gonna do that. Keep it low impact. This is a great stretch when your glutes get tired from a lot of swings. Low back stretch. So we come down through a shallow squat, round up. Again, down. Round all the way up, one vertebra at a time. Lunge back, lunge. Deep and low, maybe your back knee touches the ground, maybe not, just be sure you step far enough back that your front knee is over your ankle, the bottom of the lunge. This is the sagittal plane, let's add rotation. Twists are like a love letter to your back. Four, three, two, tap that handle. Just tap and rise, going through a bent knee deadlift. Hard style plank at the top. Are you ready to swing? Wheel workout gets started right now. Swing it, 24 swings. Power breath, exhale, exert. Clinch, clinch at the top. Kettlebell is about fire and flow. Yin and yang. Notice how I stay extended. I don't break immediately when the kettlebell starts coming down. Seven, six. If you don't enjoy swinging, you're not going to enjoy kettlebell. It's the granddaddy of all kettlebell exercises. Right, clean, clean. Good, boom, four more. Hit that hard style plank at the top. Don't let the ball go over the knuckles, it's around. Swing it out, 24 of them. Like a slingshot, the further you get your hips back, probably the more force you'll be able to apply to the kettlebell. Try to avoid letting your toes leave the ground. Try to avoid rolling out on the outsides of the feet. Eight more here. It's low impact, but high intensity. Maintain neutral spine alignment. That means at the bottom, you're looking about four feet in front of you. Clean left. You'll look amazing. Tame that arc and nobody gets beat up, banged up. Three. Swings, 24, two-handed swings. Please feel free to take a break at any time. This wheel workout is short, but it is fierce. It's variable intensity, interval training. Eight more right here, eight. Anytime your glutes feel like they're not really giving it 100% anymore, you need a break. In two, right clean to press. Clean, press. Clean, press. It's a strict shoulder press. 
so there's no knee dip. You're strong and stable. Hard style plank. Press. Up. Four more. Yeah, yeah. As you press, if your kettlebell is heavy enough, you may want to create a fist with the other hand. Create tension throughout the body, and it may assist you in pressing overhead. One more. Swing it out. Notice the bottom of the kettlebell swing. My back is not vertical, but it is flat. 16 more of these. Kettlebell is actually fantastic for strengthening the posterior chain. Low back, glutes, and hamstrings. It gets a bad rap because people swing improperly, and that's when it comes at a price to lower back. Left arm ready, left arm clean and press. Oh yeah, ah, feel strong, feel powerful. Uh-huh, raise the roof with that bell. Four more reps. Swing it out, 24 reps. You get it with this real workout. We keep coming back to the hub, which is hard style two-handed swings. 24 of them every time. Notice how the swing gets your heart rate up and strengthens your glutes at the same time. It's not just cardio, it's not just strength, it's not just power. It's all three. Again. Snatch or press overhead. Windmill. Do that again. Push this hip out and back. Stay strong through the shoulder. Again. If it's too challenging keeping the kettlebell overhead, you know your option is to take the kettlebell in the bottom hand. If you have any issues with your shoulders where overhead pressing is no good for you, come here to the lower arm option. Two more, Up, upper hand or lower hand. It should be very challenging, but doable with the weight you selected. With time and with training, you'll be able to raise the weight of your kettlebell press and windmill. Swing it out. Come on, hips way back there. Those of you with really long femurs, thank your parents. You chose them wisely, because that means that you're going to be able to pull that slingshot back really far. Makes for a super powerful swing. Eight more. Left arm, snatch or press. Windmill. Again, left hip out and back. Maybe you use a friend or a trainer to wrap a stretch rope around your left leg and help you work on pulling out and back with that left hip. Perfect. So it should be challenging to keep the weight overhead, 
But if that weight is so heavy that your arm is wobbling, you probably need to lighten your load, okay? You know what they call the people that don't listen to their bodies? Injured. They end up injured. One more. Great for strength, great for stability, amazing for flexibility. And swing it out. Don't be looking up at the television at the bottom of the swing. If you are, it will come at a price to the cervical spine, which is your neck. Head and neck stay in neutral spine along with the rest of the spinal column. We've gone into our bigger wheel, eight more swings. Then we'll go a full 16 high pulls. Right arm only, high pull. Maybe you use your free hand as a guide here as you're learning rhythm and timing. Eight more. Two-handed swings. That ball may come around and smack you in your bottom. You have a little cushion there just for that. Do the launching. Swing it out. Hit it. Hard style plank at the top. Yes, you lock out. It's a nanosecond of lock. Right arm, snatch. Boom, raise the root. Hips launch it, shoulders grab it. You are so close to there. This is the hardest part of the workout. Eight more snatches. Come on, it's loose initially. Swings, swing it out. Heels engaged with the floor, keep the toes engaged with the floor. Root through the earth. Snatch, left arm. Come 
Nice. Tame that arc. Eight more snatches. This is a spoke. Remember, we start and end with the hub, which means no getting out of it. You have slings coming up in four snatches, but they'll be your last slings of the day. Swing it out. 24 to finish. Hip way back. Don't lose the fire in your glutes that you started with. If you're under too much fatigue, pause break. Eight reps to finish. Release safely. Amazing! You rocked that wheel workout like nobody's business. Let's move on to the Turkish Get Up core chapter that we'll do in a descending ladder drill. The Turkish Get Up strengthens, stabilizes, and mobilizes throughout the whole body. It's an excellent exercise for strengthening the structures that support the spine and pelvis, which is essentially what the core is. You've learned how to perform a Turkish get up in the tutorial. Let's put it into a workout with a descending ladder. We'll perform three Turkish get ups on the right, followed by three Turkish get ups on the left, then climb the ladder down. Two, two, one, one. Let's get to work. So laying on your left side, roll to your back, punch to the ceiling, release free arm, free leg. Punch. Slide through, swivel, get up. And reverse that. Lunge back, hand slides down the thigh, sweep through, drop your forearm onto that side hip, all the way to the back. And we'll repeat that twice more with your left arm. Punch up. Release free arm, free leg. Ha! Sit up. Swivel and get up. Lunge back. A Turkish get up can be done with a kettlebell. You could do it with a dumbbell in a pinch. I have seen this done with a small person. My preference is with a kettlebell. Roll to your back, punch the ceiling. Release right arm, right leg, roll. Pulse it, reach through. Raise your torso, swivel and get up. Lunge back, swivel. Be sure that strong arm stays straight, the wrist stays straight as well. and halo around to the other side. Here we go. Turkish get up with your right arm. Punch that ceiling, open up through the chest. Get up, lunge back, swivel. Hand slides down the thigh, equal and opposite with the arm, sweep through, down to the forearm, resting on the side of the hip, all the way to your back. And repeat. Down. One more Turkish get up here on the right. Get up. Lunge back. And halo 
around to the other side. This time, we're climbing the ladder down, so it'll be just two TGUs here on your left arm. Before then, two TGUs back on the right. Repeat. Sweep that leg through. Raise your torso. Get up. Lunge back. Swivel. Hand slides down the thigh. Sweep through. Down to the forearm. All the way down. Elbow to rib cage. Halo around the head. Here we go. TGU. Punch. Release free arm, free leg. Punch the ceiling. Raise your torso. Swivel and get up. Lunge back. Left leg. One more Turkish get up on this side. Then we will have descended all the way down to the ladder with one rung on each side. Swivel around the head, I call it a halo. Turkish get up one time here on the left arm. Touch. Release free on free leg. Roll lift. Tall sit. Swivel that leg through. Raise your torso. Get up. Lunge back right leg. Halo safely around. Last Turkish get up of the day. Roll to your back, punch the ceiling. Release free arm, free leg. That's it for our Turkish get-up chapter.